Hello and welcome to this intermediate level uh, video from the Cornish Radio Amateur Club. And today we will be looking at uh, technical basics, but we will be using the 2019 syllabus. That's the new syllabus from the RSGB. And the RSGB have repositioned the um, syllabus for the intermediate to sit more uh, in the middle or equidistant between the foundation and the advanced uh, examinations. So this uh, 2019 syllabus intermediate course is a bit more in depth than the old intermediate syllabus and later on you'll see that we draw on some of the advanced subjects um, pulling them back into the intermediate syllabus and we'll be referring to those. So today we'll be looking at uh, technical aspects, section 2, and we'll be covering uh, section 2a in the syllabus, fundamental theory, section 2b, power, and section 2c, resistance. And in the next video we'll be looking at reactive components, AC theory, and digital signals. So this video, or this section rather, has been split into two. Now, as usual, uh, we will be reviewing the foundation syllabus um, for the 2019 syllabus to make sure that we don't leave any gaps in your knowledge. And the foundation syllabus will be in the red boxes and they will be overlaid with the blue boxes with the intermediate syllabus. So, by the time you get to this video, you should understand that the flow of electrons is an electric current. Recall that the con a conductor allows electrons to flow easily and that an insulator does not. Recall that metals such as copper and brass are good conductors, as is carbon. Plastics, rubber, glass and ceramics are regarded as insulators. Recall that water is a conductor and that current can flow across wet insulators. Recall that the unit of current is the ampere, abbreviated to the amp, and recall that the unit of electrical potential is the volt. So that's pretty much the same as the old syllabus anyway, so I don't think many people will have much problem with that. So now the uh, next syllabus, the intermediate syllabus, expands on that and says, recall that components have tolerances and that the measured value of a component may not uh, precisely agree with its marked value. Well, let's have a little look at a carbon resistor. There are various types of resistor. Remember, a resistor has resistance, and resistance opposes the flow of current. A carbon uh, resistor was one that uh, is um, made uh, for quite a long time. They've, t they've been um, uh, replaced with metal oxide resistors in a uh, large number of cases, um, but they, um, they still exist. They're very cheap, cheap to make, um, and uh, therefore very common. So there on the screen you can see a little rod of carbon or carbon material. Now it's not pure carbon, it's um, a mixture of uh, uh, graphite, um, resin um, and other materials which give that uh, rod um, some resistance. Now the uh, rod will um, have a certain length and a certain cross-sectional area and the resistance will increase with the length and decrease with the co uh, with uh, increasing uh, cross-sectional area. So in other words, the fatter that rod is, the less the resistance, the longer the rod is, the greater the resistance. And so these are manufactured in a factory. And this sort of shows the process, if you like, of making up the resistor. Uh, end caps, conducting end caps and wires are glued to the end and a an encapsulation is put onto the resistor. And the encapsulation then has colour bands on it. And on the left at the top of the screen there, you can see the decode for the colour bands. So looking at the first digit, that's the column on the left, and looking at the band red, we see that the um, digit two there, that means that that's the first digit of the value of the resistor. And similarly, the blue band indicates that the next digit is a six. 
And then the third band then is the multiplier. And in this case, green means 100K. So we have 2600K or 2.6 mega ohm resistor here. And finally, the last band in our example is gold and it's a 5% band. So that means that when it's manufactured, it's been made to a tolerance of plus or minus 5%. Now you can pay more and have a 1% resistor or a 2% resistor or pay less and have a 10% resistor. For 1% you'd have a brown band, for 2% um, red band and for 10% a silver band. But now in our example we have a 5% carbon resistor. The other characteristic of the resistor it's its ability to dissipate heat. It might be able to dissipate an eighth of a watt or a quarter of a watt. And these are common values. But going back to the uh, tolerance, um, we have the uh, tolerance that we um, accept when we buy it. And here that we call that the purchase tolerance. And in our example highlighted there with the uh, yellow row, uh, is 5%. But if we look in the spec sheet for the resistor, we might also find that it has a drift tolerance of 5%. Now it's outside the scope of this uh, video and indeed the syllabus to look uh, into uh, drift um, and um, these things. They can be quite complicated. They can be short-term drift, um, temperature drift and long-term drift. So we'll just accept for the moment that we have a drift tolerance of 5%. And the total tolerance, therefore, is 10%. So, with this resistor that we have, the nominal value was 2.6 mega ohms, and that's 2,600,000 um, ohms. And we could take 10% off that, and so the minimum value that we might expect might be 2.34 mega ohms, and similarly, if we add 260,000 ohms to it, i.e. 10, uh, uh, 10 rather, uh, it could be 2.86 mega ohms. So here what we're saying is that although the nominal value is 2.6 mega ohms, uh, it, we could reasonably expect any values between 2.34 and 2.86 mega ohms. Quite a, quite a um, spread. If we'd bought a 10% resistor, one with a um, silver band, um, we could have up to a 25 different a 25 percent difference so when we're designing our circuits we have to take into account uh, the tolerance so in the syllabus then returning to that item uh, it's simply a um, recall item so we don't need to perhaps understand the background to it too much but we do need to recall that components have tolerances and that the measured value of a component may not precisely agree with its marked value. And this is the case not only for resistors, but for capacitors uh, and inductors, and indeed um, active components such as uh, transistors, diodes, etc. So then moving on to, uh, to A2. Um, recall that a circuit is needed to allow current to flow and that a circuit will include a source of electrical energy. Recall that current in all parts of the series circuit has the same value and recall that the potential difference across items in parallel are the same. And this doesn't differ very much from the old foundation syllabus. This being in red is the foundation syllabus and you need to be sure of these items before you proceed. And if you need to look in, uh, into that again, we have the Video Foundation 3D, that's based on the old syllabus, but voltage, current and resistance. To be one, and so in that previous section then, there is no uh, further uh, section for the um, intermediate. Uh, to be one for power, um, and recall that power is measured in watts. Recall that a current through a resistor results in conversion of electrical energy to heat energy in the resistor. Understand that power in watts is a in a circuit is the product 
of the potential difference or voltage and the current or amps ie equals uh, ie p equals v times i and calculate the unknown quantity given the numerical value of the other two once again this is covered in foundation 3e power uh, which you should have had a look at uh, for your um, foundation exam anyway but you might just need to uh, run a quick refresher with that so that'll bring you up to date once again on 2b1 there's no um, uh, intermediate section that corresponds to it and resistance to c1 understand that resistance is a property of a material and opposes a flow of electricity Recall that the unit of resistance is the ohm. Recall that the current through the resistor is proportional to the voltage across that resistor. Use Ohm's law to calculate the value of any one of the three quantities, V, I or R, given the other two. Understand that where a supply feeds more than one component or device, the total current is the same of the, of the currents in the individual items. And once again, have a look through um, voltage current and resistance 3d if you need to refresh uh, that you may also need to have a look at um, kirchhoff's laws um, and we'll be covering those in just a moment so there is a corresponding update for the intermediate course for this understand circuits comprising serial and or parallel connections of resistors and cells Calculate the value of any one of the three quantities, V, I, or R, given the other two. Calculate the combined resistance of two or three resistors in parallel. And there is a note to the intermediate syllabus item saying resistors of different values may be used in series or parallel or combined series parallel circuits. The formula for parallel resistors will be provided. The prefix is milli, kilo, may be involved for some of these calculations. Now this is an instance where the new syllabus has strayed into the domain that used to be occupied by the old advanced syllabus. So it's a good idea to have a look at this video in the advanced series, resistors in series and parallel, calculating equivalent resistance. Have a look at that and you should be able to calculate the um, resistance of uh, the equivalent resistance of resistance in series that's fairly easy it's just adding it up um, but in parallel it means applying the formula now in the old advanced syllabus you are simply given two uh, resistors in parallel of equal value and you had to determine the resistance and that's a lot easier than what you have to do now so have a look at this video resistors in parallel uh, from the advanced series um, and that should bring you up to the required standard for the new um, syllabus. Moving on then uh, to 2C2 resistance in the foundation series you needed to understand that the sum of the voltages across a number of resistances of resistance in series uh, equals the supply voltage and that is um, Kirchhoff's law or Kirchhoff's voltage law. So that's covered in the advanced um, uh, video that I mentioned. Um, so that'll bring you up to date. That perhaps is a little more than you had to do for the, um, uh, for the old syllabus. Now that expands on the intermediate um, syllabus. It says, understand that two or three resistors can be arranged to act as a potential divider and apply the formula. Once again, this has been pulled down from the uh, old advanced syllabus into the intermediate syllabus. And so have a look at the video, Advanced Potential Dividers. And that will give you an idea of uh, what's been covered. Understand the difference between uh, potential difference and electromotive force. Understand the concept of source resistance or impedance and voltage drop due to current flow. And yet again, this has been pulled down from the advanced course, so there's already a uh, video there for you to have a look at. It's called Advanced EMF and PD, 
and you need to have a look at that. And then the final item, 2C4. Recall that polarity must be correct for electronic circuits to function correctly or damage may be caused. So that is a foundation item and there's no equivalent item in the intermediate syllabus. So to sum up, uh, this section of the um, intermediate sy syllabus borrows extensively from items that were previously in the old uh, advanced syllabus. For those of you taking the new intermediate syllabus, um, you'll need to cover all of those items. For those of you taking the old, um, uh, taking an exam under the old syllabus, um, you won't be tested as rigorously. So if you find some of um, the preceding items a little difficult, don't worry, it won't be as difficult for you. However, if you are thinking of going on to do the advanced course, then uh, you will need to cover these anyway. So perhaps just as well to get them out of the way. So thank you once again for listening to Cornish Radio Amateur Club uh, videos.